welcome to the renaissance and welcome to the illusion of hope for negroes part three remember slavery is an institution sanctioned by the law of islam and to abolish it without compensation to the mohammedan slave owners would be an act of injustice amounting to nothing less than wholesale confiscation flora show in 1905 and this is from the book tropical dependency an outline of the ancient history of the western sudan with an account of the modern settlement of northern nigeria published 1905 and from granville sharp in 1776 the african slave trade has been publicly supported and encouraged by the legislature of this kingdom that's the united kingdom of great britain for near a century last past so that the monstrous destruction of the human species which is annually occasioned thereby may certainly be esteemed a national crime of the most aggravating kind and this is from the book the law of retribution or a serious warning to great britain and her colonies founded on unquestionable examples of god's temporal vengeance against tyrants slaveholders and oppressors and this was by granville sharp and published in 1776 so before you tell us how it could have been africans selling other africans we encourage you to go and read the historical records first and here are things we must note that speaking english language is not indicative of knowledge or wisdom or intellectual capacity as sometimes claimed or suggested by the slave master and his slave hunting accomplices and this is very easy to see because a mentally challenged person or an autistic person in england would speak impeccable english that does not mean they are now more intelligent or more knowledgeable or have better intellectual capacity than the negro child or negro adult who cannot speak english so to balance this discourse we challenge you to show us english people including their professors speaking african languages better than their owners so ideally we would expect to see an english professor or whatever thing that speaks any negro language better than the negroes themselves then you can tell us that spoken english translates to intellectual capacity as suggested by the slave master and his slave hunting accomplices and for us here at the renaissance good english is more of a measure of a good slave than anything else the typical difference between a house negro and a field negro was their ability to speak better english or any of the other slave masters languages like french than the field negroes also another point of note is that the slave masters educational system is mere conditioning and not really about wisdom or intelligence or capacity building so ideally it is something akin to garbage in garbage out it is what the slave master tells you in his classes that you know and that's what you are measured by and not that you are smarter than anyone else who perhaps did not get the opportunity to attend the slave master's conditioning school system remember that the education is about what is being taught for example a negro child is being taught that he or she is a slave and that cannot be wisdom or a measure of intellectual capacity at all in any way shape or form and this our position is further buttressed by what kataji Wilson said in the miseducation of the negro the so-called modern education with all its defects however does others so much more good than it does the negro because it has been worked out in conformity to the needs of those who have enslaved and oppressed weaker peoples so clearly we see that the education system of the slave master depends on what's being taught and it is all about being able to reproduce what the slave master teaches you in his class otherwise if education translates to wisdom or intelligence or intellectual capacity for example people like okezi bazo the governor of abia state holds a phd but we can see the footprint of mediocrity from the slave master and his accomplices in the way he acts and behaves so education cannot be used to classify somebody as being wise or intelligent or having better intellectual capacity than anyone else and likewise people like obasanga for example even though we know he's a 
a former member of the slave hunting terror group now called Nigerian Army, so we don't expect he will be naturally a sensible person just like Gowon and other groups used by Europeans to oppress and kill people, supposedly their own siblings, because they lack humanity and they lack common sense. So ideally, Obasanjo holds something like a PhD, but you cannot say he qualifies to be a sensible human being. You don't see this an insult, please. The truth is, it doesn't matter how you color it. Those people, they lack humanity and they lack common sense. And that is why the slave master installs them as leaders in those areas. And in the event you think we have lied or you consider it an insult to such persons, we want you to challenge us here and we'll show you proof that they cannot be classified as sensible human beings. They are actually the reason the slave master claimed black people are not humans because of their behavior. They don't behave like humans at all. And so, we will see religion as purely an attempt by man to colonize man and colonialism as simply an export of the slave trade from the New World to what was Negro land and Guinea. And that Christianity and Islam are both tools and instruments of slave trade and oppression and never related to the creative force that brought everything into being. Please bear in mind that we prefer to use whatever brought the world on everything into being to using the slave master's terms of God or Allah because he claims his own iterations are correct while those of the Negroes are false and as far as he has lied once we have to consider whatever he has said as lies and so our biggest proof that these religions are purely never related to the creator of heaven and earth or whatever force that brought everything into existence is that the slave trade was a legacy of both Christianity and Mohammedanism, now called Islam, and that the Europeans and Arabs never believed that Negroes were human. So if they were not human, then could they have been selling their religions to non-humans? And also, the activities of the British during the slave trade, during colonialism, and during the genocide in Biafra between 1967 and 1970, and what the British are doing today in Biafra and Ambazonia proves beyond any reasonable doubts that the religions are just tools of slavery and oppression and never related to the creative force that brought everything into being. And this brings us to the question, if Christianity or Islam was true and had any powers whatsoever in them, would the British have given them to the Negroes? and give the guns to the Fulanese or Arabs who were their slave hunting accomplices? The answer is certainly no. So there is no way they could have given them to the Negroes if there was any power in them. And that remains our biggest proof and we challenge you, even if you hold a PhD in theology, you know everything the slave master knows about his golden calves of Christianity and Islam. We want to challenge you why you will believe that they could hate the Negroes the way they do and then give them such a religion that could have brought them anything good. That's our challenge to you. The Books and the Laws The Bible and the Al-Quran of Muhammad, now called Holy Quran, were works of men without anything like divine inspiration at all. They were completely works of men. And that the books contain the codes and systems of slavery and enslavement of the Negroes. And that the slave master and his accomplices make laws that they do not obey but rather made laws for the negroes and this brings us to the question were there no laws during the slave trade if there were laws what were they saying about the slave trade so if you were to research this you would discover that the slave master and his accomplices made laws to facilitate the slave trade and to accommodate it the same way you see them making laws and constitutions to say that one nigeria is something they agreed with people they are oppressing that was exactly what trick they played like we told you biafra and ambazonia today will expose who and who were behind the slave trade and also expose the religions of christianity and islam as mere golden calves and it is observable that the slave master never talks about the buyers whenever he's talking about the slave trade. You will hear the likes of Professor Goetz, who we know are controlled scholars, talking about how it could have been Africans selling other Africans, but never mentioning the buyer of the slaves and what he could have given to those Africans or their names. While we know many British slave hunters like John Hawkins, like Francis Drake, 
we know no single Negro slave hunter, but it is very easy to see that Professor Gates will never talk about those because he is a controlled scholar. He is there to propagate the wishes and caprices of the slave master and his accomplices. And let us not forget that Negroes were never allowed to learn to read or write the slave master's languages at that time. So they were able to sell their lives to all ends of the earth without the Negroes being able to at least counter them. Intellectual Capacity There is the claim that Negroes are intellectually inferior or even not humans by the slave master and his accomplices and this claim alone proves that the slave master and his accomplices are not as intelligent as previously thought remember the mere fact that they could look at fellow humans and choose to say they are not humans is enough proof that they are not even intelligent enough to know who is human and who is not and above all looking at this opinion of the current british prime minister regarding the slave trade in the 21st century defending the slave trade and advocates for a return to colonialism is enough proof that the slave master is not as smart as many think but just a heartless and murderous person who just enjoys oppression and man's inhumanity to his fellow man just look at that alone it proves it that there is no way the slave master can be superior or as intelligent as he claims to be he is only as intelligent as his slave hunting partners the likes of people in the nigerian army people like obasanjo remember this is why they always install those who were slave hunters as rulers in nigeria that's why they always talk about them because as we always told you there is no sensible human being that can be in the nigerian army it's impossible anybody you see in the nigerian army and you were asked to conduct a research to say enumerate the number of fools in the region all you need to do is to take anyone there that is not the arab or ifulani that gives you the number you need it doesn't matter whether you believe us or not but we challenge you to it we will prove it to you beyond any reasonable doubts that no human being that is sensible enough can be in the nigerian army and further, if we looked at the slave voyages of having names of slaves in a kind of manifest according to Professor Gates and the concocted rubbish he has there. So how could they have gotten the names of the slaves but cannot give us even one name of those they claimed that were selling the slaves to them? They don't have their names, but they have the names of the people coming into the slave ships, which you can see that is a lie. But like we always told you, a simple test is to look at the slave master like the British for example. You speak English with a different accent today. They don't understand it. But they are now trying to tell us that at that time they could write the names of people whose languages they had no idea what it's all about. Because they don't want the world to know that it was a hunt, a raid and a capture. We are going to show you shortly how both the Mohammedans and the Christians protect each other regarding the slave trade and why they were able to sell the lie that it could have been Africans selling other Africans. And never forget, the slave master uses his slave hunting accomplices to prevent Negroes from development so that his claim that they are not humans can be made true. Remember, the slave master works like the fake pastors you have. Just imagine where a pastor sleeps with a woman and comes to prophesy that in the next nine months that a woman was going to get a child. Knowing that he had slept with the woman with the intention to get her pregnant, that's ideally how the slave master operates. And here is a side note on the Biafra and Ambazonia struggle, but we shall focus on the Biafra struggle. Remember we mentioned to you at some point in the past that one Prince Darlington and Simon Epa were still in the struggle while the leadership of IPOB called DOS were no longer in the struggle. Remember that. But now that position has changed. So we want you to know that Prince Dalentin is no longer in the Biafra struggle, but now compromised like the criminal members of the leadership. So he is no longer in the struggle, contrary to what we told you then. Then he was, but now he has come out of the struggle. He's no longer there. So ideally, it is only about Simon Epa that is still in the struggle. And we know your mind is going to go to the Edu of Dr. Nelly. And we want to tell you clearly that the same way we told you then that Simon may not know that the DOS are no longer in the struggle. That's how we will tell you that he may not know that Dr. Nelly or Nelly of Febo as they call her is also no longer in the struggle. 
So the reason she brought the Idu narrative was what she was asked to come and say. That's why she says a spirit told her, ask yourself how somebody sensible enough as a human being could have been following Biafra's struggle and all of a sudden, as soon as Kano was betrayed and sold to the enemy, she came with Idu and unashamedly telling people, adults, that a spirit told her that if they changed their name from Biafra to Idu, then they will free Namde Kano. We will show you that that spirit she's talking about is actually the slave master. We will need to show you why they are against the name Biafra shortly. It's about the slave trade. And so, did you hear about the show of shame coming from the court in Abia State and the ruling of 1 billion naira awarded to Namde Kano and how people are celebrating it? Those celebrating that ruling and that judgment are those who do not know the history of the slave master and his accomplices and that the judicial system is actually an institution of the slave trade. That's why you see the judges wearing the slave master's hair. It means they are now representing the slave master. So we'll show you what they want to do with that judgment shortly. So if you remember during the elections and the tribunals and all that, when they will rule on cases, removing one PDP candidate here and putting an APC here and there. And when you complain, they will always refer you to another and tell you that because this one did not favor PDP or APC, that is why you are not happy. That is a game of the slave master and his accomplices. That is what they are trying to do with the Abia judgment. So now that they have done the Abia judgment, you will see that they are going to rule against him and the canon. They might even condemn him to death. And then when you complain, they will say, you were happy with the Abia judgment. Now you are no longer happy with this. That's how big their brains are. We are not telling you to believe us. Just watch and see. Like we always told you, we are different from your pastor. Your pastor tells you stories you want to hear so as to get your money. We tell you something we want you to go and think about, something we want you to investigate yourself, to look out and see. Like we told you, the slave master is never smart, but he is a sort of beast. If you don't understand how to decode their games, look at the IPOB leadership, for example. You will hear that their E-rats will always tell you, when you suggest to them that Mazen and the Kano was betrayed, they will ask you, where is your evidence? The reason all of them say the same thing is because that's what they were asked to say. They may not know. Remember, the slave master knows to target the leadership. And if you remember the likes of Marcus Garvey, you remember how he was targeted and they will always use a Negro against a Negro. Remember W.E.B. Du Bois and what and what he did with or against Marcus Garvey. Remember Malcolm X and Martin Luther King Jr. And when Martin Luther King Jr. discovered that he has been deceived, something happened to him. And more recently, in Enan the Kano's case with the British, he holds their citizenship. But the slave master is playing the ostrich, as you can see. So, did you hear about Thomas Sankara and the coup against him? Did you also hear that he had a cousin that was involved? So, who do you think sponsors those coups? you see in Africa. Do you think people just wake up and decide to go and stage a queue? Somebody sponsors them and it's usually the slave master. When you do what he doesn't like, then he will do that against you. And here are a few questions we have for the compromised leadership of IPOB and to Kanon Takano and the more powerful all that were in the Biafra struggle but now working with the slave master and his accomplices against supposedly their own people. So we ask them, if the descendants of the slave hunters and the descendants of the slave master himself promised you after you destroy ESN and everything Mazen and the Kano built and stop the Biafra struggle that they will release Mazen and the Kano to you, what will happen if they do not release him after you have finished destroying all this the same way you are doing? It doesn't matter whether you try to tell people that you are not doing that. We know you are doing that. It's as clear as day. And permit us to ask you again, do you know any agreement in history that the slave master and their slave hunting accomplices ever kept when it concerns the Negroes? They don't keep any agreements. They are just telling you that, believing that you are not even a human being so that you won't have the foresight to know that they won't keep it. They would rather kill you. They will never keep it. If you see the number of people they have killed, from the slave trade to colonialism to the genocide in Biafra in 1967-70 to 70, until today and they are still killing and something in you tells you that they can help you or somehow keep the agreement with you, 
then you're a dreamer. The same thing with the woman they are using for the Idru narrative. There is no way they can keep the agreement with you. They just use you to achieve that purpose, believing that you don't have foresight. If you like, we'll show you where they wrote all these things. And so, just so you know, after they must have used you to destroy the ESN, IPOB and Radio Biafra, they will make something happen to you. Remember the case of Martin Luther King Jr. They convinced him that integration was the way forward. But when he realized that they were integrating into a burning house, they made something happen to him. So if you think the slave master will keep his agreements with you after you have helped him destroy the thing that Nandikano suffered to build to the liberation of supposedly your own people. Remember, the same way you're a slave today is how your descendants will be as you are working for them. The reason you are working for them with your whole heart is because you don't know history. We will show you in this video the agreement they signed with Biafra in the 1840s so you understand why they are fighting the name Biafra and then using the do to see how they can change the narrative. And in the case of Simon Ekma, just to tell you what they are trying to do in that case, to tell you that they are not smart. The slave master is never smart. He becomes smart when you choose to be gullible. So ideally what they want to do with Simon Ekma is the compromised US will be used to destroy the Biafra struggle. Then they will use their propaganda machinery, including the BBC, to say it is Simon Eber that sabotaged the struggle. That's what they are trying to do. Remember, basically everything the Negroes believe from the slave master are lies. But because Negroes do not read, even when they read, they read themselves into the lies of the slave master, which is why you see them claiming to be the people in the Bible. But all we challenge you to do is to watch out for what we're saying. They will destroy the struggle by themselves. Then they will use propaganda and lies to say it was Simon Eber that sabotaged them. That's why you see Simon Eber talking about Biafra and Biafra freedom the same way he was doing before the leadership of IPOB and the slave masters connived to carry out the coup against him. It doesn't matter whether you believe us or not. That was why we told you about the Sankara coup that the cousin was there. So when they project Nandikano's brother, do not think they don't know what they are doing. They are playing on your intelligence. They want to see if you will accept him as a replacement for Kano. Why they guide him, they guide him and use him against you. That's what they are doing. If you doubt what we're saying, research the slave trade. Research the role of the British in the slave trade. Research the role of the Fulani. When you finish that, you will understand whatever games they are playing today. So the propaganda against Samoa uh, will be used the same way they used the Arab priests. Remember, they tell you it was the Arab priests that were behind the slave trade, whereas they did not even have the capacity to. Likewise, Simon Ekba doesn't have the capacity to bring down the struggle, but they will try to convince everybody that he is the one that is sabotaging the struggle instead of the compromised IPOB leadership and the siblings of Namdekano that are the ones destroying the struggle as it stands. And also, if you were one of those that tend to shout or, or condemn those that suggest that one of the lawyers in the defense of Namdekano is compromised, here is what they want to do with that Abuja or Abia judgment. Remember, with that Abia judgment, they have succeeded in doing the same thing you hear from the Irats. If you notice, when you ask the Irats, why did the compromised leadership of IPOB not do what Nandekano instructed them to do? They will always ask you something like, why do you believe that he asked Simon to broadcast from Radio Biafra, but you doubt that he also asked them to expel Nelly? And if they have told you something like this, it gives them away because like we told you, there is no way you can work for the slave master and his accomplices and not appear foolish to anybody who is in the know of who they are. So the reason they all say the same thing, like when you ask them, do you know that the leadership must have betrayed Namdekano? They will ask you, where is your evidence? The reason they all say something similar is because it was planned. This is something similar to what you will see with the BBC, the Al Jazeera and other slave masters institutions of the media. Their lies will always be the same thing. That's why you see that they will call it farmer's headers clash because they planned it. Otherwise, no sensible person without any undertones will come and see where 100 people or 200 people were massacred in cold blood and tell you it's a clash. It's impossible. So that's why you see even Al Jazeera lying against Biafra and Inamdekano today 
because they are all together in the game. The same way they were as slave hunters during the slave trade. And so as we earlier said, just to show you that those that are saying some lawyers in the Nandi Kano Defense Council are compromised, from that Abia judgment, you can see that it is the footprint of the slave master and his accomplices. They went to secure that judgment so that tomorrow when they condemn Nandi Kano to death, their irats will be telling you, why did you not complain when they were awarded $1 billion in Abia? Is it because this one has found him guilty? That's what they are trying to do. Like we told you, they are never smart. If you study their history and compare it with their lies, you will see that they are never smart. Just that the Negroes are gullible. So again, permit us to ask you, doesn't Nam Khan, as a British citizen, not have an MP or anyone from his region that could have raised this issue? But you notice how they all kept quiet because they are the ones behind it. They want Nigeria or one Cameroon anything favors the slave master and his accomplices is for the slave trade we challenge you to ask yourself why does the fulani want to stay in the same country with you if they do not like you but we shall show you why they want you to be in the same country it's for slavery and subjugation that's what they are trying to achieve and to those talking about what they call Igbo presidency always remember that it is one man working for both his family and friends that's all and above all if you claim you have a democracy and the votes count, how come it is the Fulani minority that determine who can rule, even in your state, even in your local government? At least we all saw what they did in Nemo State and like we told you, the votes do not count. It is still the slave trade but being done subliminally, which we shall prove to you. It doesn't matter if you believe us or not, the slave master is a subtle beast. And as regards the so-called Igbo presidency, they will never allow that to happen because that would be akin to elevating a slave to rule over the master which is impossible the only reason you think it's possible is because you don't know you're a slave and to further show you how foolish they compromise the leadership of ipob can be they forget that the fact that nandi kano could have been arrested means they too can be arrested and treated the same way and above all one of the easiest ways to look at stuff like this is the fact that in all the negotiations and bargains, they have not benefited anything. The slave master did not even offer them to say, okay, let us release all IPOB members or allow people who talk about Biafra to do that freely. They have not even been able to achieve that. All they are doing now is working for the slave master to dismantle everything Biafra. That's what they are trying to do. The leadership of IPOB. You don't need to believe us. Just watch and see. Is it not interesting that the leadership of IPOB compromised the leadership anyway would allow people listen to Al Jazeera that is lying against Biafra, the BBC that is the biggest enemy of Biafra freedom and other media outlets including Nigeria One and then tell the sheeple not to listen to Simon Eber. That is enough proof right there. The same way we told you when one member of the DOS said protests should leave Britain and Nigeria that kidnapped Kano and focus on Kenya that he was no longer in the struggle. That's the same way we are telling you today. These are proofs, very little things you have to look out for. If they were in the struggle, they can't say all those. And to further show you that the IPOB leadership knows what happened to Nand Kano. If you remember, he was abducted around 21st or 20th of June 2021 and the slave master and his accomplices acting as Nigerian government announced it on 27th if we are not mistaken. Now we want you to look at this website and it is their new website and it says it is ipobworldwide.org. We want you to look at when this domain was registered. So we see that they registered the domain on 8 July 2021 meaning that the slave master and his accomplices announced the kidnap of Namde Kano on 27th June 2021 and they registered this new domain on 8th July 2021. What does that tell you? That means barely two weeks later, they had all these things planned out. That is why you see that their lies are uniform. They will tell you what's your evidence. They will tell you why do you believe this and not believe that which makes it easy to see that it is what they were asked to say. Remember, if they were not asked to say that or not told to say that, they would have been saying things that are different. Their arguments would have been different. But because they are acting the same script, that's why you see them saying exactly the same things 
and the same responses to the question of who could have betrayed Namdekano. You will hear them tell you, what's your evidence? Then another time you ask them, why did they not do this or do that? They will tell you, why do you believe this? Or that Kano said this, but you don't want to believe that he also asked them to expel these people. Whereas you can hear that wherever he was in must have been bugged. There is no way they will allow Kano to be issuing directives to IPOB from the dungeon when they spent millions to go and kidnap him from Kenya. Remember, like we told you, this is the slave trade in full glare. You want to look closely, research history, you'll understand what games they are playing. So all they are trying to do, if you look at the domain and look at how they have set up their accounts and how they want people to start donating, is they want to be able to cut out IPOB funding in such a way that they will now be in control because their target is to destroy the movement. The IPOB leadership is controlled by the slave master and his accomplices and they must have done that even before they abducted in the canon. That's why you notice that the leadership never tells us how they could have abducted Kano and for over a week. No one had, whether he went alone or not. You may have heard somewhere where they claimed it's part of how they would realize Biafra. No, the slave master cannot keep that type of agreement. The British can go to war to prevent Biafra freedom. If you doubt what we're saying, we will simply go back to the question that we told you about Christianity and Islam as mere golden caps. If these people that have not allowed the Negroes freedom, they have not even allowed Biafrans to agitate freely. We are not talking of giving them the freedom. Just agitate freely. Don't kill anybody. Don't shoot anybody. Just agitate that you want this freely. They have not allowed it. How can they give them Christianity and Islam if that was true? And further, the establishment of an thought farm by the compromised IPOB leadership is also an exercise in futility because during the genocide of 1967 to 1970, the slave master and his accomplices, remember, the Arabs flew the fighter jets. They were bombing farms to prevent the crops from growing so that the starvation would be maximum. These people, the same spirit they had as slave hunters is what they still have. You don't need to believe us, but watch and see. And so we asked them again, what would they do if after establishing the food production, whatever nonsense they are trying to do, and the slave master bombs them, what would they do? If they think there is anything the slave master is promising them that they can ever get after they have finished destroying IPOB, we will show you here why the slave master is the one fighting against Biafra, is the one fighting against the name as well. 